Okay, so we start a new unit um, tonight um, uh, on humor. And, uh, and I think it's actually a fairly important part of learning how to, um, uh, how to love. Uh, the issue is how to love when humor gets out of control and is uh, demeaning. So a priest, a pastor, and a rabbi, no. <laughs> no, no, no. The, we're, we're talking about humor, but, but that's only, what we're really talking about is ego. The, the, um, when, when you talk about healing hum, humor and when you talk about divisive humor, um, we're not going to use the word ego all that often, but we really are talking about ego. There's something deeper going on than whether we're appropriately funny or not. That's not really the uh, uh, the issue uh, that we're looking at. Uh, for me, preparing for this unit has been a matter of self-reflection and self-revelation. We all struggle. No, we probably all don't. But a whole lot, and certainly I struggled with. Um, uh, well, that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't quite what I wanted to say. I, mm, you know, who um, or or I should have said something. That that may come up more often in our discussion. That that humor happens. Seem it seems like humor, but it has a dig in it. You think, oh. I think so and so bled over that, and I didn't do anything about it. Um, and um, uh, so, if if it occurs to you that that you're not getting this a hundred percent right, I'm certainly with you. <laughs> that, that that this that this is a struggle. Um, but there's also a sub theme I want you to be listening for in the next two or three weeks as we talk about this, and that is how we hear scripture, in what tone? In what tone do we hear scripture? And that'll make more sense as we, as we go along. But there, there's numbers of issues on the table, humor, ego, um, and also how we hear scripture, the tonality. To explain that a little bit better right now, what we're going to come to is the recognition, or at least the question, of when Jesus says a certain sentence, um, if you do not hate your mother and father, if you do not hate your mother and father, if you do not hate your mother and father, means two different things. You know, but we hear the tone as as deeply devout, deeply serious, deeply heaven and hell hang in the balance when you know on some of these things. And 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 the question that that I'm going to raise and um, is the Bible isn't written in one tone. It's written in all the tones we are capable of. And, uh, and it's helpful to remember from time to time um, that, that if you hear something, a statement you've taken one way, and then you change the tone with which it was said, it, it, has, a different, uh, it has a different meaning. Well, we've all been there. When someone goes with humor that diminishes, belittles, or flat out insults another person or perhaps an entire group of people, but it's clever and others around us freely laugh. And in that moment, we have a choice to make, but we're almost always caught off guard. That's, that's the problem when that happens, that something is said that diminishes, belittles, or flat out insults another person or perhaps an entire group of people, but it's clever and, and a bunch of people laugh. And, and, and since we're caught off guard, the odds are we're gonna laugh too. And then a few minutes later say, that wasn't quite 
what I wanted to do. I don't, I don't appreciate what was said there. It was hurtful. Um, but I don't catch that quickly enough because I'm almost always flat-footed. But I think what that calls for is why this unit of study is important, uh, to be a little less flat-footed. I mean, to, to think through, what should I do in those moments? What would, what would be good default positions? Um, and what I'd probably settle for getting way ahead of ourselves, but is something like, um, I don't have to make any response at all right now. I, I can wait and think about what I want to feel about that. But I sense I'm a little uneasy. Maybe I should just sit, sit it up. That's, it's that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, but uh, the recognition that we're almost always caught off guard and we, we don't always make uh, the decisions we would like to do. So what do we do and how do we best do it? So much humor is at the expense of others. And, and that's the first set of, that's the first problem, that so much humor is at the expense of others. Um, a number of you looking here on the screen, uh, a, a number of you uh, know Jim Jenkins, yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Of right. Mm -hmm. The the now what I there are many things I really like about mm -hmm. Jim Jenkins, but mm -hmm. but 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 the thing that um, that amazes me most is he is a he is a thoroughly funny person who never slips in a, on 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 the sense of humor. It's almost always self deprecating. The the um, and, and 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 I, you know, I've heard many, many funny things from Jim Jenkins. I've never heard anything that could hurt anybody, which is amazing. And um, uh, you, you can probably see that in some of the productions he he did. But it, it's not hurtful. There's always a healing quality, um, and that's a fundamental point of of of, of humor: is it healing or hurting? Because uh, it can be both. Humor is good for healing, you know, if you, if you get it right. Um, but, but, but much humor is at the expense of others. Much humor is egoistic. It's meant to aggrandize oneself by putting others down. And um, so what did Jesus do? Did Jesus have a sense of humor? The short answer to that is yes. And we're going to talk about that uh, later. But how might we follow Jesus and learn how better to love in the art of humor? And, um, okay, so in light of Christian faith and scripture, we have the standards and measures at the, um, at the back, you know, this is an eight page lesson, relatively long, but at the end of all these lessons, there's this appendix for the standards and measures and I call your attention to it again, uh, the importance of loving your neighbor, even loving your enemy, loving one another. Uh, when we engage in humor, are we acting in loving ways? And, uh, and then uh, uh, fundamentally the golden rule, which we'll keep coming back to. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Apply the golden rule, you know, Think that through in, in the context of your talk, of what you're talking about. Okay, under what circumstances have you experienced humor out of control that turned demeaning? Or more broadly, under what circumstances can you picture this happening? Someone goes with humor that diminishes, belittles, or flat out insults another person or from in what circumstances does that tend to happen? Or under what circumstances can you picture that happening? Dale, yeah. I, uh, I had a lot of experience with this in the workplace. My prior employer, which was a great company, but it had a culture that... Uh, sort of fed this, you know, we go to a big meeting, 
someone wouldn't be there. And so they were the, the object of uh, remarks. And uh, it, was, it was bad. It was really bad. But everybody just sort of went along with it. Yeah. Um, and it, it was also sad. We'll put it that way. Yeah. No, that's... So he quit. <laughs> no, well, actually, they fired me because I spoke up. Yeah. No, that happens in all sorts of contexts. You don't want to miss meetings. <laughs> I don't know. I think th things have changed enough where we're so hypersensitive to everything. Uh, what might have worked or happened 20 years ago will not fly today. That's yeah. true. You know, that's, that's... Well, yeah, humor is always a moving target anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my friends who uh, was terribly funny, and uh, but but he was saying that when you when he thinks that almost all funny comments he makes are at the expense, unless they're self-deprecating, mm -hmm. they're almost always at the expense of somebody else slightly or a group of people. Because you're pointing out, you know, I don't care if it's just a little comment or whatever, you're you're kind of grouping a stereotype. You're talking about a stereotype and that's what makes it funny is because it's a stereotype or something. It may not be that bad or whatever, but but he was saying when, when you analyze those sort of things, it, it's almost always, you know, not it can, you know, it can be troublesome. That's what I'm saying. And you know, yeah. I thought it was I think I that if that you're now. like like if you're making light of someone, let's just pick on a friend that isn't in present company to your point before, John, about the meeting. I always sit there and think, is this a joke I would make or or something I would ridicule them or or jab them about if they were standing in front of me? And if it's not, then I probably shouldn't say it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had like another thing is like if you're trying to be like funny or sarcastic, but like the other person is like busy or like serious. And the other person's what is busy or like serious with some task and like at that moment they don't want to be like uh having like fun with you yeah but you don't understand that and like then it will it it becomes troublesome mm -hmm. at that point also mm -hmm. yeah. that is like one crucial thing i would say mm -hmm. yeah and, and 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 that's a real problem and and, and um i mean that happened to me a couple of weeks ago that i just had a weekend where my hearing aids were off. I was <laughs> fighting a cold. I was this, I was that. And someone barked out at the beginning of the class uh, some funny comment. And I just went, I mean, I just think. I mean, because I just wasn't, you know, and they didn't know. I mean, that comment would have been just fine nine times out of 10. But but you have to watch for that. Okay. I mean, because you really don't know what the other person's up for in, in, in that. You don't know what they're dealing with that day. Um, yes. And the assumption is it's all okay. It's it's open season, but not you, you know it's not always. I think also we haven't mentioned it, but respect or a lack of respect enters in here. We can all have fun with each other and kid each other, but when you cross a line and show a disrespect or something demeaning or devaluing of the other person, now you got a problem. Yeah. So setting circumstances where this can happen, what I have written down here, it's, it's, not, it's not where it usually happens to be, but where it, where it struck me is in potluck lines at church. <laughs> and and it, it, it probably struck me because it doesn't like usually happen but it's sort of like startling when it does and you're just walking down the line and someone makes this comment about so-and-so or someone and you know I remember back in the you know back numbers of years ago when I first got my when I when I had lost my enough of my hearing that I need hearing aids and so on and so on. My hear hearing was not what it used to be. And, and the first thing I thought was, good, there's a bunch of things I'm not going to hear. <laughs> and that is like really good. I mean, 
So, so, you know, you hear something and you think, I'm not sure that might have been kind of a sketchy, never mind. <laughs> and um, and that just saved that just saved me a whole lot of uh, agita from, from then on. But but I mean, I mean, humor's out there all the time. We we learn our patterns from society, and and uh, uh, as we mentioned at the very beginning, a whole lot of ego is involved in it, and and mishaps happen. And and so what we're working with here is what's well i'll get to that in just a second but what we're working at is when you hear something that strikes you as inappropriate it catches you off guard you're flat-footed but what you want to figure out is is to do something that won't do more harm than good you know <laughs> I, I i mean by making like a really big deal here um Chances are that's not quite the answer uh, either. So, so it's a matter of so. So, what I'm saying, this is a very good lesson in the art of learning to live a life of love because it actually takes learning. I mean, it, to to recognize that uh, to recognize at certain points what I might be inclined to point out how sexist that remark is. And I've terribly embarrassed the person that just made it. And chances are I haven't in any way dislodged them from their sexism. I've, I've probably entrenched them. I mean, turned them defensive. See what I mean? I'm, what, what works and what doesn't work is what we're trying to, to figure out. Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you just let, I... it, let it hang in the yeah. air. Let, let, let it hang. Because once somebody says something and they kind of, and you go, yeah, and they think about it because we're all basically on the same page. And when you you hear that, it's like I probably shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, years ago, this man named Jake Arnold, he's he's with the Lord now, <laughs> and it was back in the old eight seventies, and um, he was a really nice man. He oh. had three beautiful daughters, and he saw me after church. I was visiting a, a, a congregation uh, across town from where I normally attended. And he came up to me and he said, he said, Eddie, haven't seen you in a coon's age. <laughs> and I just looked at him and the look on his face, he was just so mortified. And that's all I needed. You know, he, yeah. he said something. I mean, I understood what he said, but, you know, just, you know, right. that that wasn't that wasn't really cool. And I just kind of laughed it off. Said, oh, Jay, you know, it's good yeah, to yeah. be you too. Well, uh, sounds like you handled it great. He was mortified, right. you know, and then I just, you know. Let it hang. Let yeah. it hang. And let them. <laughs> yeah, let us <it> win. <laughs> the problem, Eddie, with this humor, see if it works. <laughs> you, you have the most expressive face of anyone I know. I hate and, that. Yeah, I've been told. Yeah, you fix my yeah. face. Well, well, but it work. It works perfectly for what you just said. Yeah, because you can let it hang, and you did communicate. Yes, what you want to communicate. Yes, the a person with a less expressive face is. I don't think they caught it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, but but yeah, you can just let it fall flat. Yes, let it fall flat. If, let it hang I mean, is still I mean, a key. It's one thing if the object of the humor that's the butt of the joke or whatever is standing in the same group we've yeah. got a whole different scenario going then if they're just making a comment about some group or whatever that you find kind of inappropriate I mean, if it's really bad you have to say something but if you just want to say you know kind of like yeah. just just let it fall flat i i don't you know yeah. you, i didn't make me laugh it didn't make me laugh you know, right. just like let it you, okay. can, but, you can literally feel the air being sucked out of the room. Right. And, and then again, and then you feel for the person. Yeah. And you want to just move on. So that's you right. know, dwell on it. You right. know, yeah. just address yeah. it and then move on. Right. Well that's that's ID that's an ideal situation when when that happens. But I think what, what I'm envisioning here more often is we all started laughing. We all, it was a, it was an inappropriate comment, but it was witty and clever, mm -hmm. and we all went for it. Mm. Right. That's that's to me the. Yeah. Now, so someone made a comment on online. That's where I was trying to get in. Um, yeah, if I could quote a funny guy, 
Jerry Seinfeld just in the last week said that the problem with stand-up comedy is that you are you now can't risk anything because you would be politically incorrect. So what used to be funny, we now are a little more cautious about being in the field of blindness. I think of Mr. Magoo. He used to be funny. But if you're blind, Mr. Magoo actually makes fun of blindness. So there's so many things that we used to laugh at that I think we're a little more sensitive about now that makes us think twice. Yeah, I, I heard that thing. I heard that thing interview, Rosemary. It was really interesting. And it goes to what um, Kathy was saying that, you know, humor is a moving target. I mean, we all remember Foster Brooks and his whole shtick <laughs> about being the drunken driver and talk to the nature, mm. you know, okay. and then he lost his he lost his whole livelihood because that whole character became, you know, inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Right. But it used to be funny. It used to be funny. Mm -hmm. And it, that's yeah. what happens. I, yeah. yeah. We were watching a television show last night. Um, the Feld Feldmans? Anyway, it's the story of uh, Steven Spielberg's. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Right. And he, he, as a teenager, gets um, becomes the brunt of jokes at his school. And um, because he's Jewish and he's the only Jewish person in, in the school. And he gets picked on and beat up. And uh, but a lot of it's just. The humor is just, I mean, it's just really hard on him. And the, so we, I mean, obviously we are not going to be doing that to one another, <laughs> but it's, it's like what in those kind of more um, extreme cases, it's like you do have, you, if you were a, another student there, you would think it'd be nice to, you know, for a Christian student to step and say, step, somehow be, identify with them, you know, be able to, um, step in in some way and, and I, I'm kind of at, at, at loss as to exactly how to describe that but yeah. that's that's the kind of situations that I find to be really offensive mm -hmm. yeah yeah now what what he does it, it, it it's um the names are changed it, it's about a fictional family but but uh, but it's based on his childhood what his childhood experience it's very it's very very well done but the the um what he does is he's already good with the camera. And, and so while he's at this new school and he's not being well received, but they do recognize the planners of the okay. beach day or something, mm -hmm. uh, uh, know he's good with the camera, film the day. And he takes his greatest tormentor and glorifies him, absolutely glorifies him. I mean, catches every moment where this guy shines and, and turns him into the hero of, of his film without comment. And it drives the guy up a wall. I mean, I mean, he does he, I mean, it, it does exactly what it should have done. The guy comes and says, Why did you do that? And and it just, I mean, just can't believe that I kept treating you like this and you made me a hero that day. Mm -hmm. And brilliant, mm -hmm. you know. But we're talking about we. What you're you're talking mm -hmm. about is what he's been through already, yeah. and what we might have done about that. Mm -hmm. Or okay, so it's a moving target. But what kinds of humor are inappropriate, demeaning, and destructive? Or if you look at it another way, what kinds of stories are almost almost never funny? What kinds of stories are almost never funny? Well, I know there's it's supposed to be the perennial thing, you know, someone slips on a banana peel and it's funny. And I just find that never funny when someone gets hurt from an accident. I'm not nice like Debbie. <laughs> you find it funny. <laughs> it, de it depends. Um, I watch America's Funniest Home Videos every week. That's my Sunday evening, you know, unwind. And <laughs> some of that stuff, you know, you actually, I actually feel it in my body when they take a fall. Mm. And so that's, that's not, but I. I still find that funny. I mean, it, it, it depends. Yeah, yeah. It there's depends, some funny but stuff. But honestly, happens. America's Funniest Home Videos is one of the few things that I laugh out loud about yes. most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a fun. Um, but you know, I, I, I the story about Joanna the Macrame ladder. Oh, come on, oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good story. <laughs>
You left, yeah. left us with that image over here. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. That, no, that was that was good humor. Right. Yeah. Yes. It, it was mm -hmm. perfect. Right. It was fantastic. Think about your image and how uh, you know kind of strange <laughs> that was. But at the same time, it's honoring her cleverness and yeah, right. her ingenuity, and mm -hmm. yeah, so it had all those pieces to it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on, what does experiencing demeaning humor feel like and what does this do to its recipients? You know, we can leave that sort of rhetorical, but maybe break it down a little bit into what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of such humor? You know, what does it feel like to be on the receiving end of such humor? Andy, why are you looking at me? Anyway, <laughs> it, can, it can be painful. Um, you know, I grew up in the South, and uh, I went to high school with people that weren't used to going to school and uh, going to school with a diverse student body. And uh, sometimes they, they felt close enough to you to really say some really stupid things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I would take that and try to make it a teaching moment. Uh, that's where I started learning to do my faces. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people people can make a lot, you know, things that are always said, you know, Black people are always late and this, that, yeah. or the other. And it's more confusing than Father's Day in color town and, you know, all of those kinds of things. And so we, we have to address some of those things. And a lot of those things I heard in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. I, I think there are cases where <clears throat> you might, if you're the subject of that kind of humor, you might be inclined to believe it. Yeah. So that's worse than hurtful. Yes. It's transformative, mm -hmm. right? And and talk about devaluing. It's deformative. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah that, Which that... in some cases may be the point of the humor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the, that's the worst case scenario. Is that, is that, is that often the recipients, regular recipients of humor, begin to internalize may begin to internalize it, mm -hmm. accept that as the truth about themselves, and that's the worst outcome. Right. Well, and even if you don't personally, even if you you know deep inside it's not you or it's not your. You know, what it, the fact that you feel like a whole lot of people out there have that feeling because they all laughed or they all made fun of it yeah. or whatever, it just makes you feel more oppressed. I mean, mm -hmm. because when I moved to Australia, people made fun of Americans somewhat, but they made fun of Christians a lot. Mm. And, um, and, and it's, you know, it really, that was, that was an open, open game on Christians in a way that at the time was not in the United States right. at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you would hear jokes where Christ is the butt of the joke, yep. which you don't hear so much now. Um, or I, I, you know, I probably, I think they're in the U.S. more now, but anyway, but they were, that was a real big deal. Or, or people making fun of you as a Christian or whatever. Um, and, and not that you were given that up, but just that you felt so outnumbered. Yeah, and, and as a teenager, that was you know and isolated. Yeah, you just you just feel like wow, mm -hmm. very out. Mm -hmm. well, there have been the, well. Let me take ten minutes and catch Jamie up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you, you you'll you'll catch it someday. <laughs> the um, yeah, I I, I mean there've been celebrated cases. Uh, more like sort of in the aftermath of 9-11, there were a number of celebrated cases of Muhammad being the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and um and I think you know, I think most people learn that that's not cool. Um but at first it's at first it was open season. And uh, yeah, I mean back in the day when whenever there was a dust up in the Middle East, there was those faxes that went around with the drawings and stuff. Yeah, you know, just 
Now we have email. <laughs> okay, so we're we're talking about humor that's um, that's uh, clever, that's witty, but that is has some destructive aspect to it. It diminishes someone or um, it demeans uh, people in various ways. How is this so? Think clever, witty, blah 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 blah, um, and someone's likely the target of what you just said. How is this situation often depicted in movies, TV shows, or books, and with what consequences? What are we absorbing from our culture about this? Cool or not cool? Yeah. Are we talking like about a joke that backfires and could cause harm to somebody? Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> and and the, 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 the joking that, that could cause harm to someone, we would wish it would backfire. Mm -hmm. But it, but it, you know, but it, but we're, we're talking about it just harms somebody. It hurts their feelings. It, it uh, makes them feel poorly about themselves. It depresses them. It makes them feel like the outsider in the group. There's nothing good about it. But anyway, in movies, TV shows, and books, how is this depicted? And with what consequences? Depends on the story. Yeah. Um, it's range of things. It's, yeah. it's celebrated. Well, no, but sometimes it's the it's the way that the hero stands up to sometimes thing because but well, yeah, it's not a universal point. Yeah. And, and sometimes the hero does become a hero because they do stand up. You're right. Right. Because it, it, it but you know, you have what I'm getting at. There's there's so many examples. Uh, Bogart and, and Bacall, if you're just the witticism going back and forth. And and you know, if, if I went back and watched the two of them, they're probably both up for it. You know, so that's that may not be it. But but James Bond can always is a clever put down, and and you and you're with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're so proud that he can always be right. That his wit is that sharp and that clever. And what do you want to do? You want to be James Bond. Mm -hmm. And you know, in that moment, you're going to be like him. And that probably won't work. You know, I'm, I love James Bond movies, but you know, <laughs> the the you know, Harrison Ford in almost every show, the wit in the and and you know, he's he, what I'm saying is he is an admired actor and for a good reason. But just the the cleverness of the guy, and and often there's someone who's the recipient of 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 what he um, what he said. Northern Exposure, which we've gone back and been watching on um, wow. on Prime, and and uh, watching uh, Joel and Maggie in their relationship. But if if you, if you haven't seen it in ages, Joel's the Jewish doctor from New York that ends up in this town in Alaska, and Maggie's the the woman who flies planes and and there's something between them, but it something. And you know we've watched four seasons now, and I couldn't tell you what that something is, but there's something between them. And, but the you know the they in many moments they savage one another. And and then other moments, you know, and and again, you know, again, maybe they're reading one another well, but but the people who watching them may not be as good readers of their relationships. That's what I'm I'm saying. TV makes some things look cool that a lot of us probably yeah. aren't skillful enough to to take that message to take to yeah the talk radio. What talk radio and talk mm -hmm. shows? What are they? Put down after put down after put down, and so then we go out on social media or um, or in our arenas, and and are more inclined to think that's like okay, mm -hmm. and um, and and really it's um, really it's uh, uh, very destructive. I mean, a lot of what you, what, a lot of what I think we see in Washington now, the dysfunction comes from, you know, late in the 1980s when, uh, I don't know what 
what uh, there was a law changed on on the on a, on making sure there was a I forget how the how the law worked, but it opened up the season to talk radio that you could mm -hmm. say whatever you wanted to say, and that was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 the, there's a direct line from that decision to to the ugliness that some politicians uh, engage in. Um, does it have? To, can I mention a personal experience? Or does yes. it have to be in movies, TV? So no, it, it, that that's the. 25 minutes she missed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 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 you, you, so you can catch up. Yeah, go ahead. No. Go ahead. Okay, no. Back in the you know, 70s and 80s, you know, I was a member of our singles groups and, you know, dating services. So I met this girl. Uh, <laughs> Sandy's <laughs> sitting right here. She was like four. <laughs> anyway. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah, and I was talking to her at a, like a not a bar, well, somewhat like a bar. And she goes, well, what do you think, you know? And uh, personal experience, and, blah, blah, blah. I, and she goes, what do you think about me? I go, ah, you're, you're just too heavy, you know, to go out with, you know? I, I just don't want to go out with. And I noticed, Whoa. I noticed that, um, that, that I'm a point blank person, <laughs> but back, I even said to myself, I I heard her feeling. <laughs> you know, so uh, about 15, 20 minutes go by, and we both got up and we left our separate ways, but I was hurt. So now, from now on, I have to make a different approach. So, what I say is basically, you know, I work 24 hours a day, or I'm so busy, or so, you know, I'm sabotaging it a nicer way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. 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 You want to say, no, thank you. That's, that's what I say now. I'm working, I'm busy, I'm, I'm involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we're going to come back to, the, to this issue in more detail later, but, but one of the <laughs> what, what, you know, one of the kinds of stories that are almost never funny is about a person's appearance. Period. About a person's appearance. That will not turn into a healing situation. <laughs> but, but great, great illustration. Great illustration. And it's also not safe right now, so yeah. Yeah. At this day and age, it's not safe. Like back then, you can say something like that. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're like, uh, yeah, this is all. Yeah. They'll say, like, you're fat shaming or something like that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Call the police. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, 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 the point is in our culture, the clever witticism, including the clever put down, is the way you identify superiority. You know, that's, that is the, I mean, if they do it with a certain class. Someone's in the waiting room. Oh, mm -hmm. someone's in the waiting room. Yeah. No, Robert's been in the room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. The the um, so 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 in in media, it indicate it's meant to indicate that you're the person in control. You're you know and. And, and, and which makes, you know, as you're growing up, you think, I want to be that person. And you tend to start taking on some of the qualities of that person, including ones that aren't particularly Christian. Um, okay, so here we come to a section that we always do in these units, which is recalling stories or teachings from the life of Jesus or other texts in scripture that perhaps show you loving ways forward in responding to humor that's out of control and is demeaning. The so stories or teachings from the life of Jesus or from other scriptures, you don't need to know, know the book, chapter, and verse. The, tell, it, tell it to us the best you can, and if someone in the room knows it, they can speak up, but you don't have to. Just mm -hmm. what are you thinking? What do you remember from scripture or the or the life of Jesus or other texts in scripture that, that talk about 
Oh. I think it's the the way he treated Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus was the the butt of a lot of negative commentary and or jokes. Well, he was a wee little man, Stacy. <laughs> Yeah, but no, that's that's that is perfect. That's exactly it. Others. Well, can you can you imagine standing there when his mother comes up at the wedding and says, uh, "They're out of the wine. Uh, can you help us out here?" You know, can you imagine really the tone of that conversation? <laughs> but you see, that's exactly, that's exactly, um, that's exactly the issue. Can you imagine the tone? You know, mother, what do I have to do with you or something right. like that? Woman, what do I have to do right. with you? Um, and 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 if you think of it in in conflictual ways you know it's a brush off but if you think oh what do i have to do with you you know which is another complete thing i mean we read tones into these stories is what i what i want you to keep thinking as we work with more of these tone and more of these stories going on. We and so we understand the story this way. And I've always understood exactly the way John just said. The the but but when I look at it now, I say, well, are we sure? Do we know the tone Jesus used when he said there's so many could, possibilities, right? Yeah. Because well and, that, yeah. And, and the thing we're gonna the thing we're gonna head toward more uh, maybe next week, but is is the images we have of Jesus are essentially humorless. It's because of the art. <laughs> the, the images that we have of it. I mean, just, just in this moment, you know, like an, as an actor, I'm picturing Jesus. I mean, he wasn't sitting in a corner, you know, posing for a portrait, you know, right. at a wedding. Mm -hmm. So he's probably smiling. The little kids weren't afraid of him, so he probably smiled and, yeah. you know, laughed or whatever. And maybe there was a, a dance going on and He's smiling, and Mary comes up to him and says, uh, "Baby doll, we're out of we're out of wine. <laughs> Woman, what am I to do with you?" Well, <laughs> you know? I mean, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. know. But but yeah, the the so so we're going to keep coming um, coming. Go ahead. I was I was going to say, but but even even today, people get in a lot of trouble because if, especially if you're a writer. Uh, and you've written something and it's kind of joking or it's kind of this and people don't read it that way and and a lot of times when people get quoted um they get in trouble uh, because because even today when you see something in a written word you know it loses the tone of the person who spoke it and the person says you know well i was you know i that was a joke that was an off you know that i meant it like you know xyz but but so if we think it's it, so if it can so easily happen today, yeah. you know, when you're trying to look at something 2,000 years ago, you know, we probably ought to give ourselves a break, but, you know, <laughs> but, but we need to try all these voices on to see, because reading it just one way flat isn't the way it was probably intended, but, um, but still, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's more of a universal problem than you might have mm. suspect. Yeah, yeah. oh, absolutely. That's, well, yeah. It, that's always the issue, but when we come to scripture, we tend to read it. My point through this whole unit is we tend to read it in one tone, mm -hmm. and it's not written in one tone. Um, it, 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 it encompasses the, the all of humanity, and, and, and a, a, a point, I even have the picture of it in the next page, that the, the, um, the, um, the, the TV uh, series now, The Chosen, um, which I recommend to anyone, especially if they haven't seen it, um, the depiction of Jesus gets this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, it would be, Mother, what, what can I do? I mean, come on, mm -hmm. you know, it's not my time, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it's, it doesn't indicate rejection. It indicates intimacy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, 
and and uh, and in the in 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 I I think the more people who see the chosen is it's actually going to have an impact in how scripture is read. Mm -hmm. and actually how scripture is read and it'll be a positive uh, constructive impact okay what we're going to look at for the uh, last few minutes is, is a number of texts that that i've thought of and found that that relate to that relate to appropriate language and inappropriate language and that's usually what these texts are dealing with is appropriate language and inappropriate language are they dealing with humor? Um, likely, partly, but not specifically. Uh, they're talking more about things like idle talk. Well, a lot of humor is idle <laughs> talk. The But there's idle talk that's not humor. You follow what I'm saying? It's, it's not a perfect fit here. But the first one is the ninth of the Ten Commandments, that thou shalt not fear false testimony against your neighbor. Well, there's a sense in which certain things you say about your neighbor, albeit cleverly and with humor, is false testimony. That's not who they are. That put down is not what they deserve. Um, and so even in a sense, the, 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 uh, the Ten Commandments starts raising the issue of talking about people in ways that are accurate and respectful. Tell the truth about that person. And that that tends to be not just their worst moment. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. That that uh, that everybody has their worst moment, but that's not what you keep talking about. You, you talk about the person in a full, in a, a full uh, embodied sense. Uh, the way the Psalms begin. Like, Psalm chapter one, yeah. Okay, bless it. Oh, what? <laughs> it sounds like the bells of transubstantiation during a mass. <laughs> um, oh, the communion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. When that takes place. Yeah. During communion. Yeah. yeah. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. And so, so the first Psalm, uh, verse one, first verse of the entire book, raises the issue of mocking. And that we we could address this whole issue through that lens, the, the issue of, well, mocking is a form of talking about people that is inappropriate. Have we all done it at some time or other? Yes. But as Christians, it's something to remember that in terms of learning how to live a life of love, no, that's mocking. I, I'm going to try and control that. I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Uh, verse 12 through 14, a scoundrel and villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks with his eye, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers, and plots evil with deceit in his heart. He always stirs up to ten, uh, dissension. I'm not sure. You know, one of the, one of the, Thoughts I had when I was preparing this material is is um, that I felt a shortcoming in and a limitation in even prepping for it is is knowing what humor contextually was then, you know, um, and 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 I just have to say on this particular unit. I'm treating it as if it were addressed to us today, just the way we're reading it. You have to. Usually, I'm looking for contextual material, and and I think probably someone's written the book on it. Mm -hmm. I just haven't read it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. The uh, but 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 so I see I see a winking with his eye, signaling with his feet, motion with his fingers, whatever it is, he's stirring up dissension, and it's humor is capable of creating uh, uh, dissension. Chapter twelve, verse eighteen of Proverbs. Many proverbs would probably, you know, they talk about the tongue a lot. Okay, this one, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And that's that's what to remember in, in conversation and communication. You're talking about someone. What can you say that brings healing into this situation? Or what would be a healing comment to make? Um, the... Uh, Isaiah 57, and we'll call it a day with that, but Isaiah 50, we'll call it a day with anyone ready to make a final comment or whatever, but Isaiah 57 verses three and four, but you come here, you sons of a sorceress, you offspring, this isn't humor, this is flat out condemnation, but you come here, you sons of a sorceress, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes, whom are you mocking? At whom do you sneer and stick out your tongue? Are you not a brood of rebels, the offspring of liars? The, so that that notion of sneering and sticking out your tongue. The, that seems to have lasted years. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the idea you stick out your tongue and it's all funny. Yeah, <laughs> that aspect of humor is stuck. I just want to add, maybe this can be... Uh, in forty, but um, also there's been studies shown that if you are very ill and you're trying to recover from a surgery or some other thing, watching funny movies, things that you find funny, is very healing. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, there's yeah, there's just know this, just know that you know, good laughter is great for you know, right. Mom and I mm-hmm. used to laugh a lot, even in the last four months. And mm-hmm. mom even said, you know, that's what makes this whole thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, good yeah. is that you find the humor mm-hmm. in what's happening in, mm-hmm. or in, whatever happens. So, mm-hmm. But it's, yeah. That's a good, that's a good note to, to. Well, wait a second. Rosemary's got a good one. <laughs> okay. John Rose and I please. are laughing here off screen. I just th- through all this conversation, I kept thinking of Monty Python <laughs> and it on the mouth. Blessed be the cheese makers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that whole skit. I, I know the whole one. <laughs> Not the cheese makers means anyone in the dairy industry. <laughs> well, the, the bottom bottom line of what we're working with here is humor is good. Yeah, what we're talking about is is humor that harms Mm -hmm. and hurts people. But humor itself is great. And, you know, as Debbie said, it's uh, uh, humor is physiological. You know, it it makes you better when it's done well. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, thank you, everyone. Sweet dreams, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.